what is going on guys welcome back to another swift tutorial in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a set which is a data structure how to use it what it is uh, some more nitty-gritty details that are apple related about sets uh, so on and so forth so uh, that said make sure you destroy that like button down below as always hit subscribe while you're hitting that like button down there get xcode ready get excited and let's jump right in quick pause before we get into the video if you haven't seen it already i am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io a community where all of us ios engineers can come together learn how to build some of the top apps like facebook youtube and instagram in addition to interview prep to land some of these ios roles at top tech companies so if you're interested in the free and premium content to come head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so let's get into the video. So here we are on the Apple developer documentation website and we looked up a set and by definition, a set is a unordered collection of unique elements. So here is how it is declared in standard library. Uh, frozen is probably a new term for most of you. We don't really use this ourselves developing our own apps, but uh, Apple uses this internally. So this is kind of a cool little call out. And they have a bunch of or overview things in here. I'm not gonna sit here and read everything. You guys can definitely look this up uh, afterwards, but I do want to kind of go through some basics. And to do that, uh, as per usual, we're not gonna talk about theory. We're gonna write some code. So let's uh, open up Xcode and I'm gonna get started with a playground and we can talk through the stuff in a playground in this video. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this playground uh, intro to sets, save it wherever you'd like. And let me expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work and let's get into it. So first and foremost, how do you create a set? Well, it's super simple. It looks very similar to creating an array. So let's say we had a, a constant value and we assigned it to something like this. This would yield us a array of integers. Now a set actually looks very similar, but we're gonna explicitly type it to be a set of integers. And let me lowercase that n. So the difference here is we're explicitly telling the type system in Swift that this is not an array of integers. This is a set of integers. And the thing that will be in the set uh, is annotated with these, uh, I like to call them caret brackets. I don't even know what the technical term for this is, but I think caret brackets sounds pretty good. But uh, this is basically how you create a set. So what I wanna start by doing is we're gonna print out the number of elements in the set. And let's open up our console with the command shift Y. And let's run this playground. And we should get four because there are indeed four elements in here. Let's go ahead and add one more element. And we're gonna make sure we add something that's already in the set. We're gonna pause and hit run once more, but we still have four. So what you just saw there is the set automatically drops duplicates in the collection. So that's one of the core concepts of a set in Swift. The other core concept is that it is unordered. So right now you can see here the order is one, two, three, four. Let's get rid of that duplicate. Let's uh, iterate over the contents of the set. Whoops, for number in value. Let's call this set to be more appropriate. And let's print out the number. Let's pause that and hit run once more. And we get three, four, one, two. And I wonder if it switches every time. So let's hit run again. We get four, three, one, two that time. So it does in fact switch every time. So there is no guarantee of order for a set data type. So you might be thinking, well, what's a good use of a set? Well, the first good use is uh, deduplication. So let's say you're given an interview question or you have your own app, for example, and you need to basically get rid of all the duplicate values in a given collection, you can leverage a set. So how do you do that? So we're gonna create an array of numbers and I'm gonna purposely add some duplicates in here and it doesn't need to be ordered. Uh, I'm just randomly adding numbers. And we're gonna first print out uh, array.count. 
Then we're gonna create a set from this array by simply wrapping that array in a set constructor. And then we can print out unique. And we're gonna append in here set.count. So to begin with, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 numbers in here. So if I hit pause and hit run, and we start off with 12, and then after we have wrapped the array in a set, we're left with seven. So we know conclusively there are seven unique numbers in here. So we have this, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and these are duplicates. So it gets rid of all the duplicates. That's the first really good use case. Uh, the other use case is sometimes you want an array and you want to get rid of duplicates, but you want to maintain the order. And an issue with that, as you can imagine, per the definition of the set that we just went over, is a set can get you uh, basically uh, unique values, so there's no more duplicates. However, it doesn't maintain order. So you're kind of, uh, you're kind of stuck in a way. So a way to remedy that is under the hood, uh, I guess a little bit of a background history lesson, uh, so a lot of Apple's code is built on Next Steps code, which is the small company that Steve Jobs founded that later Apple bought back from him. Um, and Next Step has a type in it called NS ordered set, NS for Next Step. So we can create an ordered set, and this is going to be an NS ordered set. And it's this type here. And what you can go ahead and do is you can say for number in array, you can simply append, I think it's insert actually, or might be add, that's what I'm thinking of. You can simply add, huh, interesting, I thought it was add. You can definitely add objects. Let's try that one more time. So this is not wanting to cooperate. Ah, what we want is an NS mutable ordered set. That's what we want. So if it's not mutable, obviously we can't actually add or append to it. And now we can add every number to this uh, ordered set. Now, because this is uh, relying on an older day type that is common across objective C and the next step uh, lower level types, you need to define if it's mutable or not. For those of you familiar with uh, Objective-C, you know, we used to have mutable arrays and uh, the point being the var here is not the only thing you need for this type to be mutable. But if we go and uh, we iterate, so let's first, uh, let's print out the array and then we can print out right underneath it the ordered set. So I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause and run. And we should first see that we have the array. So one, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, 12, one, two. And what we're left is one, two, three, four, five, six, 12. So it, it indeed did maintain the order. So that's the workaround if you would like to use a set to have unique values, but you wanna make sure that the contents stay ordered. So cool, that's, that's on the cool best sets. Uh, now, what else could you do? So we saw a situation where we could go from a array to a set and it's pretty simple like you saw you can just do that but what if you want to uh, use an array afterwards right so like you have an input array you want to deduplicate it so get rid of the duplicates you can use a set now how do you convert this back to an array so let's say you have a function let's take a more practical example so let's say you have a function uh, deduplicate array and this takes in a array and we'll say any, and it returns an array of any, and this is gonna return the deduplicated array. So we can simply get rid of the duplicates by wrapping the inbound array in a set, but obviously we can't return the set now because the type of this is a set and you'll see the error is gonna pop up like that. Uh, let's see, well, this is gonna pop up because this is any, let's just do integer for now. The reason that's popping up is because it doesn't know how to deduplicate something that's any. If you took a look at our older video on equatable and hashable, you'll know how to make sure something uh, can be deduplicated in the set. Uh, but anyways, now this is saying that we can't return a set because the expected return type is an array of integers. 
So the simple solution to this, and it's really simple, is just wrap it in a array. So that's the really, really easy way to do it. So you guys actually just saw that other issue where we had any in here. I just wanna quickly talk about that before I call this video uh, a wrap. So the reason it's complaining, for those of you who haven't seen the Hashable video, is it, do it doesn't know how to deduplicate something that could be any type. So let's say we had a class and this class was car and we had a make on this class and then we had another class called model and this had a model title and let's say this had a model and this was a model and we wanted to get rid of uh, the duplicates in this car uh, collection so let's say we have a collection of car and we want to deduplicate it and let's see we created a set like that and then we want to return an array from the set let's give this a second hopefully it'll give us the error there it is so it's saying generic struct set requires that car conform to hashable so what this is really saying well the first thing it's complaining about in this case is we need a constructor so let me go ahead and add a constructor to this or an initializer like that. And same thing for this guy. Let's add that initializer first before we talk about the quick hashable piece. Like that. And in here, we want to actually obviously assign these properties. Those who love how my videos always get longer than I promised they will be. This starts off as a five minute video and gets into a 20 minute video. But anyways, uh, let's look at this last thing that we'll wrap up. So you'll still see that there's an error down here, if I close this, that car must conform to hashable. What it's basically saying in layman's terms is it doesn't know how to deduplicate one car from another. So what we wanna do is make this conform to hashable and be careful because there's a, as you just saw, there's a hasher, you want hashable. And then this is gonna start yelling at us because it needs to add a uh, function to be able to compare and the function is equal equal for left hand side and right hand side. So we're gonna say two things are equal if left hand side dot make equals right hand side dot make and left hand side dot model dot model title equals right hand side dot model dot model title. So we've basically given anybody that wants to, let's see what this is complaining, make, make, oh, make should be make here. Uh, we've basically given any data structure that wants to be able to figure out whether or not uh, something is unique, a way to figure that out. And let's see what this is complaining. Car does not conform. Let's try pausing this and running it. That error should go away. Let's try that one more time. Looks like we still have that error. In here, so it's saying car hashable. Let's see, type car does not conform to protocol hashable. It totally does. So that one's hashable. We might also need the hasher on here. Uh, so we're gonna say hasher.combine make. Now what this is doing, let's see if that error goes away before, okay, cool, it goes away. So what this is doing is uh, it creates a unique hash representation of a class which is just a mathematical integer representation. And we basically just pass in the string, which is a part of standard library, so it already knows how to hash it. But basically what the set can do now is use the hashable stuff, which is comparing two things to deduplicate the array. And that's why the error now here goes away. So uh, the key takeaway in this video is a set is great for deduplicating, it's uh, unordered. Uh, you can convert to and from a set and an array. And when you wanna create one, instead of just doing this, because this will infer it to be an array by default, you want to explicitly type it as a set. And then in these uh, caret brackets, you wanna tell it what it's uh, going to include, uh, basically exactly how you would do it for an array. But an array obviously would look like this. So that said, I'm gonna call it a wrap there. If you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, make sure you destroy that like button down below for the algorithm. Hit subscribe while you're at it. 
I think last time I checked, I think like 80% of you guys that watch the videos consistently are not subscribed. So definitely hit it. Helps out the channel quite a bit. Helps me make more of these videos for you. Comment down below if you have a question, want to say hi, if you have any errors. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.